Wednesday night, guys. Just did some listings, well, relistings. There's my boxes. Those are all relisted into FL1 all the way through FL7. I am up to, I think, 130 listings now, which is starting to get respectable. 169 listings for a grand total of 2,363 total, oh, total listings. So it's a good step. Uh, I'm going to stop working on it because it gets hot out here. I don't have AC out here yet. I'm going to get it installed pretty soon with my dad. So we've got the unit. We just got to put it in. And then I'll be able to work out here much longer. Right now it just gets really sweaty. So I can do like an hour or two and then I get tired. So I'm going to go inside and I'm going to work on some editing for my NC Picker channel, for my TikTok, all that stuff. Uh, and we'll do some more recording tomorrow. I already have an order that I have to pull and ship tomorrow. So... Yeah, the store is alive. Oh, let there be light. <laughs> Let's turn on the light. Oh, so bright. Hey guys, Dave the NC Picker here. And look, I got some lights back there. I mean, I don't really actually feel like it looks that different, but it definitely was dark up top before. And now you can kind of see the action figures up there. So that's something. Small, small step. So I set up some lights up there. Uh, yeah, so I am a reseller. I resell on multiple platforms whether it be eBay, Mercari, Facebook, you know, whatever I'm feeling like selling on on any given day. And right now, I'm pretty much primarily on eBay with about 100 listings, 179, I think. We talked about this in the first part of the video. This is now the next day, so I don't know why I'm doing a new intro when I already did an intro yesterday. I forgot about that. I will say this. I got a little shock mount for my mic because I noticed in this week's episode of Trash to Cash podcast, which is my podcast I do, Every time I hit the desk, it would make like a little banging noise. And I'm the super picky one. Probably no one noticed it but me, but it was driving me nuts. So I did get a shock mount. So if that was bothering you on the latest podcast, that is solved now. Anyways, whew, let's talk about what's been going on. First of all, I want to talk about yard sales a little because I haven't talked about them much. So I came to Florida. One of the big cool things about being in Florida is yard sale sales all year long. Well, if you've been watching my NC Picker channel, that's my second channel. If you didn't know, I have another channel called NC Picker. I think most of you know that. That's where I actually go to yard sales, thrift stores, estate sales, and source a lot of the stuff from my eBay store. Well, it's actually been going pretty terribly, the sourcing. I've gone out two weekends, okay? And both of those weekends were pretty weak. And actually this most recent weekend, I went out, I think I left at like 7.45 because none started till 8 and I was back at my house by 10.15 because I gave up. You shouldn't give up, but I gave up. I, uh, I think partially it was just because I had so much stuff to do. I had a bunch of furniture I had to build and I might have told you guys some of this already. But I wanted to start this video off really quick, not with Chris Farley moments on YouTube, which I was watching. Remember Chris Farley? Man, he was funny. Sad. He, he went too soon. I could have sworn at some point he said Herb Alpert in one of like maybe Black Sheep or Tommy Boy. Am I, am I like getting that wrong? I was looking for that because in my video where I was out picking, I found a Herb Alpert record and I said it in what I thought was a Chris Farley voice, Herb Alpert. And then I wanted to cut in Chris Farley saying Herb Alpert, but I can't find it. Is, I don't know. <laughs> dumb, dumb thing of the day, but I just, I don't know why I thought he said Herb Alpert. Anyway, so I wanted to start off because I'm getting a lot of the same comments. I wanted to look at a couple of comments before we go pull orders and just read them to you. So first of all, I am at 9,973 subscribers on this channel. I am hoping that tomorrow, by the time this airs, I'll be at 10,000 subs. So this could be the 10,000 sub special episode. Woo! Ah, that doesn't really mean anything. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, I actually shipped out those Kevin Muzz uh, to Silly Soft and the podcast reviewer. So I actually stood up to my word and I actually sent those out. I was very proud of that. And I supposedly have a third one of those somewhere, those plushes, but I can't find it in my house. So hopefully it turns up eventually. Okay, so I wanna start off with the most common con comment on the last video. I did not know this. And part of watching me, you know, it's an educational channel in a way. <laughs> it's not educational in I pretend I know everything. Instead, it's educational in live my life. I take you along for the ride. And when I mess up, I tell you. And I don't hide it. And I let you know, hey, I was wrong. I screwed up. And then you can learn from my mistakes just like I learned from my mistakes. My dad always said, you pay for your education even if you don't go to college. 
So, when in the last episode I taught you how to maybe break the rules of USPS, it was an accident though. Apparently, blank media, blank VHS, blank DVDs, blank CDs are not media mail. They, so yeah, if there's no like video content or, or music or anything on them, it's not considered media mail, which I think is totally insane, by the way, just my opinion. Like, what is the difference whether or not I recorded something onto the VHS or whether it's blank? Somehow though, like 80 comments said, Dave, media mail is only for stuff with content on it. And I'll, uh, you know, hold on. Yeah, the most recent comment. I'm sure from Nick Picker, I'm sure someone has already said this, but blank VHS does not qualify for media mail or any blank media mail. Leonard quit. Tapes are not media mail, dude. Blank tapes that you sent is a violation. So I'm just like breaking the rules on my channel. Hey, for all you know, Leonard, I reprinted the label Priority Mail after that episode. Good chance I didn't because I didn't know until the next day when the episode went live and the stuff was already picked up by the post office. Hopefully they don't bring me to jail. It was a mistake, an honest mistake. I did not know that. I thought a VHS with or without media would be considered media mail. But now all of you know, just like me, that if it's blank, you can't ship a media mail. And I, I changed my listing, so now it's first class, because it's one VHS, it'll be under 15 ounces. So I changed it to first class mail, so anyone else who orders it, it will ship, ship first class, which will honestly be about the same price, and it'll ship a lot faster. So it's no big deal. Just an honest mistake, but I thought you guys could learn with me that yes, blank media does not qualify, so eBay was in the right in not allowing me to choose that. Colleen Moriarty did leave a comment that, I don't know if it's a compliment or a diss, said, watching you makes my life look spectacular. Thank you for being you. <laughs> Thanks, Colleen. <laughs> it's a little bit of a backhanded compliment, like, hey, at least my life doesn't suck as bad as this guy's. And it, listen, my life's not bad. I'm just kidding around. Uh, okay, Atomic Redhead Mary commented and said, hey there, can you tell me where you got stand rack that you have the bubble wrap on? So the thing I put my bubble wrap on is actually, I've, for the last little bit, I've had it as a top link in my description for my videos. It's actually a clothing rack. And it actually just, it happens to just fit perfectly for bubble wrap. So look down in the description below. You should see that clothing rack link and you can click through and buy it. It's my affiliate link, so I'll earn like a penny if you buy it through my link. Actually, I don't even know the rate, but it's not a lot. Oh, okay, so I had a spammer. So I wanna show you this, so you guys are aware. Debbie wrote something and then pinned by NC Flipper, fake account, wrote, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscription button. Drop a message right away, WhatsApp, and give a WhatsApp phone number. That is not me. That's a scammer trying to probably steal your information or trick you into sending them money or something like that. Um, I will never give you a phone number and tell you to text me. I'm not going to ask you for money or for crypto or for gift cards or anything like that. I'm never going to text you and ask you for money, okay? So... Just ignore that sort of stuff. I went in pretty quick after that person started commenting and I deleted, I thought all of them. I clearly missed that one, but do be careful. I know Josh Harry Tornado just had it happen to him too, where people were like messaging with his name but with an underscore at the end and asking people to send him money. Okay, and then number two, we're gonna go down to the garage to talk about number two so we can kind of think through it together. Now I have not gotten a lot done since last night on the eBay front. I mean, I did edit a video and I did, uh, make a TikTok. But as far as eBay stuff, not content creation stuff, I didn't get a ton done. Let's turn the light on. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I really need to find my stickers. So I think I told you, told you or showed you, these are all the empty boxes that I got listed into these banker boxes. Now this is comment number two, probably, I don't even know, 30, 40 comments saying, Dave, I need one more light, like over here. See how dark it is over here? Um, Dave, do not throw away the lids. Don't throw away the lids, don't do it. <laughs> Everyone is highly concerned that these boxes are gonna break over time. And they're saying the lids will add additional strength to the bottom of the boxes. So what everyone's saying is, you know, if they fall off when you lift them out, Dave, tape them on. And so I'm gonna try that right now and see how it goes, because it seems challenging. Okay, so I just did it to this box. Check this out. I took tape all the way around and then I like taped over like this. And I have to say, I think you guys are probably right. It does feel sturdier already. Let me put it on the shelf. Hold on. Yeah, okay, so that's definitely better. I, I admit that. I agree with you. Here's something interesting about me. Personality flaw. Um, 
that's the kind of thing I hate doing. I just... It's like, it feels like busy work. It doesn't feel like I'm accomplishing much. And I'd, I'd rather, like, take a bin and get 50 things listed or ship stuff out or build a shelf or do something that, like, there's a real noticeable, boom, look what I accomplished today. And that, you know, took me probably two minutes to get that all taped up. You know, maybe not that much, but I had to find the tape first, which added some time. Um, and it didn't really feel very rewarding. So, yeah. I guess that's, like... That kind of explains, like, how I clean, too. Like, when I clean, I pick up all the items on the, gr on the ground and, you know, I put things in order a little bit. But I ain't, I'm not the kind of person who says, ooh, let me, let me, after I sweep the floor, I'm not the guy who says, let me mop the floor. Because I don't really see a difference before and after you mop. But you do before and after you sweep. I don't know. It's a weird thing. I don't know. It's a weird rabbit trail I'm going down. You know I don't know what I'm talking about when I say I don't know five times in one minute. So let's pull our eBay order, singular, because <laughs> I do have one. And we can look at some more comments. Uh, wait, do I have three? I might have three orders. When did this happen? Oh boy, look at this. And they're all viewers. Wow, you guys are awesome. These are all viewer sales, which makes sense because eBay doesn't even know I exist with this few listings and this kind of velocity. Like, they've forgotten my existence right now. So it's very cool that you guys are keeping my store alive. And my first order, oh, hey, Elmo. My first order is Elmo. Look how sweet he is. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> He'll blow you kisses, mwah, mwah. Um, okay, so Elmo, Elmo sold to Christina in Indiana. That's I-N, right, Indiana, sounds right. Yeah, it's gotta be Indiana. <laughs> she said, love watching your shows. You have some great content and I love that I don't have to worry about watching them around my son. He will love Elmo. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I'm not a swearer. I, I'm not. I never have been. I have probably said, like, four swears in my entire life. And I'm not even kidding. Like, literally three to four swears in my entire life. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just something I'm, I'm not a swearer. So, I am safe for kids, generally. And then Catherine ordered something out of FL5. Oh, see, this was a great deal. When I listed this, I relisted it last night. I was shocked no one had bought this yet because it's actually quite a cool value. It's in FL5, so let me pull that down. Oh yeah, it's heavy. Okay, so 21 books, guys. This is Catherine. She got 21 books and they're all sci-fi. They're actually from my dad's old collection that he gave me. He was gonna just get rid of them and I said, hey, I'll take them. Uh, he used to have the hugest collection, but it's like Terry Carr, Robert Heinlein, Heinlein? How do you say that? Uh, Deborah Chester, all types of sci-fi. I mean, those my Shadow War, yeah. I don't think I've read that. Let's see, what's this? Simon? I can't even read that. P.S.I. Fire Man. I don't know what that one is. But yeah, it's 21 sci-fi books. You know, that made me think of something. I want to tell you this, too, because I think it's important. But yeah, so here's the 21 sci-fi books that um, she picked up for $15 for the whole lot. And I think that's an awesome buy. 15 bucks. That's less than a buck a book. Ooh, careful. I got a little razor blade here. I don't want to put it in a shipment or something. Uh, but yeah, I think that's really cool. It's a really cool buy. Uh, let's take a look at her note. She said, thank you so much for your hard work. Getting content to us despite a huge move. I'm a newish eBay reseller, and you're a huge inspiration. You share the good, the bad, and the ugly, and your honesty is so refreshing. I really appreciate your transparency and positivity. My store is clever underscore, underscore collectors. That's clever underscore collectors, if you're willing to give it a shout-out. Yeah, I just gave it a shout-out. Go check it out, guys. Maybe see what, uh, what Catherine is selling. And if you buy anything, put in a little note to her saying, hey, thanks for supporting Dave. Can't wait to read these books. Keep up the great work. Clickbait for you. Another reseller said what? LOL. <laughs> so she's giving me clickbait ideas. So, okay, I think this is important because it's not really eBay related, but it's day job related. I'm going to just put these out of my way a little bit. I'm sorry. It's day job related, and I think it's important because at my day job, my boss, I've talked about my boss a lot. He can be sarcastic, and we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. But the other day... When I did my last video, I started it off kind of a little bit frustrated because he had made a comment about me stopping work at 530 because he's in a different time zone. And he had made like kind of like a little snarky remark. And I know he's sarcastic, but he said like, oh, sorry to keep you so late, Dave, like because it was 530 and he wanted to keep working. 
but I said, hey, I got to go <laughs> because, you know, work-life balance. You've got to make time for your personal stuff. You can't just work all day, even if a lot of modern companies expect you to, which is a little frustrating. And I think that's the part that frustrated me more than anything is just the expectation that someone who starts at like 7 or 8 a.m. would work till 7 or 8 p.m. when, you know, it's just not realistic as far as work-life balance. So the comment bothered me, even though I knew it was sarcastic. But I tell you all this because today he actually reached out to me and he apologized. And I'm telling you, two years ago when this guy started being my boss, there's no way he would have apologized, which kind of shows me that working with me for this long I've made some impact on him as far as being a good, nice person. And him actually, like, he said, he's like, I've felt guilty ever since I said it to you. He said that. He's like, because I know you're, like, the hardest worker in the company. And I felt really bad, and it's been bothering me and eating me, eating me up for two days. I'm sorry I said that. So, I don't know. I thought that was, like, encouraging that someone who is, like, notoriously sarcastic and doesn't really care... <laughs> doesn't show that they care about others' feelings very often to actually show a little humanity. I don't know. It gave me hope for people. Like, no matter how much you may be going nuts, you know, with your coworkers or maybe not getting along with them, there is always, you know, hope for everyone to be kind. <laughs> okay. So anyways, enough of the mushy stuff. I've got an interesting... Thing, I <laughs> how is this possible this item is not in the bin it says FL5 and it's not in here I only have like a few things listed how could I have already lost something that I just I just listed FL5 last night how is this even possible let me check FL6 and FL7 hold on all right I found it haha <laughs> this is uh the Jesus movie uh, fascinating vivid portrayal I'm trying to see what year it's from and it was this brand new sealed, and it sold for $5, plus shipping. Yeah, I don't know a year on it. I know it's been around for a while, because it's a VHS. This went to Sean Blank. <laughs> Sean said, I figured you would agree, I probably need to watch this one. I'll use it to test my VCRs. Yeah, maybe, Sean. <laughs> Sean, I think it's good for you to watch. <laughs> now, Sean, uh, Sean is a bit of a, a bit of our resident troll. I love Sean, even though he trolls me all the time. Um, he does like giving me a hard time, though, in the comments. So, $5 for that. Thank you, Sean, for the order. So what's that, what's that put our total at? <laughs> not a lot, guys. It's not a lot of money. Let's take a look. Oh, can I tell you what else I did? I hired a bookkeeper. Is that crazy? I probably didn't need to. But I did it anyways because... Okay, $49.95 is my total. I'll tell you why I did it. I did it because I'm not doing a good job of tracking my sales, my buys, my cost of goods, all that. I'm just not doing a good job of it. And so I'm like, I'm trying to like save myself from a bad experience by just saving a ton of money to pay in taxes. When in reality, I'll probably be overpaying this year for taxes significantly. If you listen to Trash to Cash podcast, I talk about it a bit more. Because I'm not doing a good job of tracking my expenditures and things like that. I'm not going to have as many write-offs as I potentially could. And so, you know, I was talking to Kevin, and he recommended I get a bookkeeper who can help me track everything. So at the end of the year, when I go to a tax CPA, I can say, hey, here's what I spent. Here's what I sold. Here's my actual profit. And here's what I actually should pay in taxes. Whereas this year, 2021, which was last year, I didn't do a good job of that, and I'm probably going to overpay on taxes. I'd rather overpay than underpay. I don't want to owe Uncle Sam money. So, but in the future, I need to do better. Um, and so, you know, I don't know. Give me some time. I'll let you know how it goes and if I recommend it. For now, I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know if it's worth it. Um, and I can, you know, once I figure, I'm not really sure where the monthly cost is going to land. Like, I know the hourly rate, but I don't know how many hours it's going to take. So once I know more in the next couple months, I'll come back and I'll tell you guys, hey, this is proving to be worth it or it's not. And obviously, if you're a good bookkeeper and you're organized, you're not going to need this at all. But if you're like me, a bit scatterbrained and too much on their plate, you know, <laughs> something's got to give. you got to accept help somewhere. And I am kind of the person who, like, wants to do everything myself and never take help. 
but it's not healthy. Like you need to accept help when, when it's available, when people are offering it, you know, accept the help, even if your pride doesn't want you to, because, you know, this is turning into like a, a real like motivational <laughs> power positive thinking episode. Sorry guys. Um, so it looks like we're going to get this puppy installed within the next seven days, which is really exciting. I ordered a shed as well, a plastic shed from Lowe's. It was... Hello? Yeah? Uh, still waiting to hear back as when we'll have them back in stock. So he hasn't heard anything. Okay. Okay. He said he checked today and he did, obviously, and he said that he has no information. Hmm, okay. So you may want to pursue other avenues if you're in a hurry. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk about it. We gotta figure out if there's where we'd put it on your property and stuff. So, I already know that. Oh, you've got to figure it out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I found some websites selling them for five grand delivered. So I don't know if we just do that. If you can, it's best to inspect it before. Yeah, to actually you pick look it up. at it. Yeah. I learned that. I mean, so you would, you would say, "Look, I want to come see what you're going to give me before you put it on the truck." Yeah. Well, did the one you get have, like, holes in it or something? It has probably 30 or 40 patches welded into it. Okay. The frame around the door is sprung down. I had to grind away at the latches to get it to close even as good as it does, which is terrible. Wow, okay. Um, and it actually had a leak when I got it, so... Okay. I mean, if I'd known what I know now, I would have refused delivery when it came. Gotcha. The other problem is that I, I bought a 45-footer Yeah. instead of a 40, mm -hmm. and the 40s are much more common. So your chances of getting a good 40 are much better yeah. than a good 45. Gotcha. Also, the other thing Bill told me was that the prices between a 20 and a 40 are very similar, or were. I don't know if that's going to be affected by the difference in steel prices or whatever, but... Okay. Uh, he said that you're better off to just go with the 40. The only downside of that is I can move a 40 with the excavator and some jacks and a lot of work, but it ain't easy. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll start looking tonight and see if we can find some. I was just kind of waiting to see what your friend said. So. Well, it's not really a friend. He's just an acquaintance, but yeah. Fine. The guy you hate. <laughs> uh, I don't hate him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. Thanks for checking. Yeah. All right, I'll talk oh, to you later. Wait. Okay, waiting. You said movies tomorrow night? Yeah, Batman, 7.30. Okay, so that was my dad calling about a shipping container. I'm investigating buying a 40-foot-long shipping container uh, for out in his property, and that's going to store my unlisted. I'm going to put a dehumidifier in there and maybe even an, a window AC unit if I can to keep it cool in the summer. And that will be where all my unlisted lives because I don't have space here. But I did just get a plastic shed for the backyard to put things like maybe my toolbox and, you know, my bike and things like that. Things that are kind of in the way in here and I could use the space. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the end of this episode, guys. $50 in sales, three total sales. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe so we can get to that 10,000 number. All right. See you next time. Bye.